Cello, 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 chillax. That's better. See, that's why you, that's why you no, use director, man. Is this live? Where's the live on? So this is this is on Oprah. This is on the own network. You say? Where, where's that? Where's it? On? Yeah. Oh, we're live. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. What's okay. what is the what is it? Morgan State. We live on Bear TV. That's what Russell's up right there. <laughs> they they have like viewers and everything, man. Yep, that's what's up. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's you right there, man. Who's that? Right there, um, right? I'm live on Beer on the own network. That's right, I'm live. I'm live. That's the whole world can see me. That's the whole world. People like in Mozambique, like what's up? What's up? What's up, man? Yo, man, we don't even need you no more, man. We streamed down, brother. How you doing, though? All right, folks. We got to get ready to get out of here. <laughs> Until the next time we meet, huh? Maybe the weekend, please be safe out there. If you're heading up to Brooklyn for Western and American Day in New York City, Brooklyn, New York, enjoy it to the fullest. Today. Enjoy the backyard. Enjoy Panorama. Enjoy the Jubilee. Hey, no, you see this white button right here? And, of course, <laughs> Eastern Parkway. Uh, this one right here. On Sunday, Leave it right there for now. Monday, Monday. Um, you see me extend my arm like this. That means capital, I need you to turn it down. The Ronald Reagan Trade that there might be uh, an echo. Avenue. But leave it up for now. And only turn it down the if you see me do this. Uh, festival. Monsoon's down there. And next we turn down, turn all the way. Jack Fusion, the whole crew down there. You know? Yeah, man. And on Sunday night here in Baltimore is the Afro Caribbean Party, the launch of the Afro Caribbean Party at uh, Ibis Lounge, Harford Road, just above uh, Glenmore. I believe it's in the 5700 block of uh, Harford Road. Huh? Nah, it's a little up on that. You know? Check one, check two, check three. Yeah, man, information at 6040 Harford Road, right? Hey, tonight at 5700 block of Harford Road, there's a big party. The man, Neil, security Neil is having his jam down there, right? Tonight, the man, the black poet, is having his affair, his third strong celebration. And St. Mary's, Richie Sly is going to be there. 
That's all the happenings happening in the community here over this Labor Day weekend, eh? Hey, all be safe out there. The Golden Bears kicking off the football season for 2018, eh? Happy Independence, the Nationals of TNT, the Twin Island Republic, the Red, White, and Black. Yeah, man. Bless up. Have a great weekend. We'll be back next week to do it all over again, eh? Right? Stay up, stay strong. Remember, unity is strength. I'm gone. <laughs> And the love Trinity does go, 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 go. And the love Trinity does go, 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 go. And the love Trinity does go, And the love Trinity does go, 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 go. And the love Trinity woman walk, 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 Mic check one, mic check, mic check. And we never stop on it. And we never stop on it. Your source for cool jazz and more, WEAA 88.9 FM, the voice of the community. Exploring the music of the diaspora, 88.9 WEAA FM and HD1, Baltimore. Hey, LG, can you hear me loud and clear, buddy? Hey, man, I got you. Ready to rock and roll, man. All right. All right. Coming to you guys in five, four, three, two. One. Let's get it started. Football, Morgan State style. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lamont Germany. This is the Morgan Game Day Experience. This is the maiden voyage of the 2018 campaign. Morgan State University football flavor about to break off. The Bears on the home front on this Saturday night, taking on the Towson University Tigers in game one of the 2018 campaign. First of 11 dances on the menu for Morgan State this season. The Bears hoping to set the tone with a win tonight here at home against the Towson University Tigers. Brand new coach, brand new attitude. They tell me it's a new day. I tell you what, the proof is going to be tonight on that football field, Earl C. Banks Field Hughes Stadium on the Morgan State University campus. The Bears hoping to set a new tone tonight against the Towson University Tigers. We're about 60 minutes away from kickoff. This is the Morgan Game Day experience. We're going to ride you through the pregame, get you set for all the action tonight. Morgan against Towson, the Battle of Greater Baltimore. I got some company uh, with me throughout the course of the hour. Just two brothers kicking it on the campus of Morgan State University. Rodney Mitchell is back for another year. It's a tough time, man, getting that contract signed. You were holding out uh, like Khalil Mack, man. Wanting to, we almost traded you. But we decided to keep you as you came down a little bit on your price tag. And I'm happy to have you back. Man. Yeah, it didn't take two first round picks. So okay. It's uh, okay. Glad to, uh, great to be back here with WEA. Most importantly, great to be back with you. Morgan State football season. And we're excited. Let's get right to it, man. Let's talk some Morgan Bear football. Uh, big test tonight, Rodney, as uh, Morgan State going to take on a team we just haven't handled too frequently uh, over the years. The Bears have played the Tigers 24 times, 18 of those 24 times. Morgan has come out on the losing end, and we watched what happened a year ago when the Bears were over at the Towson University, Johnny United Stadium, and fell by that 10 to nothing count. It has been very difficult for Morgan to solve and tame the Tigers, but there's just a different feel in the air, a different vibe, a different aroma uh, in the atmosphere. Um, I think there's going to be some, some exciting things happening here at U Stadium tonight. I have to agree. You know, last year it took a couple of games to finally get in the end zone, and it happened here at U Stadium. And you know, today I think that the Morgan State Bears are optimistic and they're excited. They have a new coach, and uh, Coach Jones is, you know, came in, you know, disciplined and, and preaching his principles, and it's it's working. Like you said, that fresh attitude, that optimistic 
uh, mentality, and most importantly, they have a quarterback. They're excited about the quarterback. He, uh, you know, DeAndre Harris went into the process his entire camp, uh, earned the right of his teammate and coaches. And like you said, at the pregame, uh, excuse me, at the uh, show on Thursday, he has a full arsenal and the keys are to the car. They uh, do early morning practices, and a couple of times, man, they got you out of your bed to come check them out uh, during the course of practice. And I know it's a team that had some energy, that had some enthusiasm. And the one thing I also noticed, they appeared to be having fun. They enjoyed one another. They enjoyed the camaraderie. And I think that rapport is important. If you're going to be successful as a team, you have to be a team. And I saw the makings of a team, at least throughout practice, in the spring as well as the, the summer practice. Absolutely. Throughout the entire practices, they look like they're on one accord. And like you said, they enjoy playing football. You know, being one in 10, you forget to actually love the game at times. You know, you're busy trying to find a win and, you know, improve the record per se. But, you know, a fresh start, a, a new season brings a zero to zero record. And, you know, this team is, like I said, they're excited. They want to get out there today against a talented Towson team. Who quite frankly, feels like they're uh, been overlooked. So we're going to see what happens, but, you know, it's a fresh start and it's a new beginning, I believe. Let's talk, Let's talk about, about some of the key players. players. Let's begin with the orange and blue about Morgan State. Uh, we'll start with the side of the ball that they say wins championships, the defensive side of the ball. For Morgan State, we got some stars. We got some people with some pedigree. We got some people with some all-conference honors. We got some folks with a pretty impressive resume. Uh, we'll begin with the leading tackler on the team a season ago. We saw him emerge last year. Uh, Rodney, the first year that he really emerged as a prime time player. I'm talking about Rico Suave, Rico Kennedy, the outside linebacker for Florida. Yeah, Rico uh, Kennedy, he had a breakout year last year. And I, I uh, like to remember they gave him Phil Cookman last year. You know, a whole coming for him, he uh, was phenomenal. And he was consistent despite the team's record. I think the defense was put in a lot of positions that the offense put them in that they wish they weren't in. However, Rico Kennedy, he comes around every game with his, you know, uh, head flying around, and he has a lot of heart out there. But most importantly, he's talented, and he believes in the scheme that Coach Jones preaches, and I think he'll have an even better season this year. If you're going to be a good defense, Rodney, you got to have somebody mean and angry and angry coming off the edge with some bad intentions. And I think we got somebody that fits that bill. It's my guy, Malachi. Malachi Washington led the team in sacks last year. He also emerged as a primetime player in the MEAC a season ago. He's back as a junior looking for to do more damage from off that edge. I'm looking for a big night from Malachi tonight. I'm looking for a big season from Malachi Washington. Yeah, Malachi Washington is very talented. You know, entering his junior year from Westlake High School. And, you know, last year he was put in a lot of positions and he thrived in the pass rush. He was uh, one of the, the bright spots on that defense when – uh, they needed a pass rush, and he was consistent. Uh, I talked to him earlier, you know, through the practice, and one thing he said is, I'm fresh, and, you know, he, he did have a little injury, but, you know, he's fighting through it, and he said he's ready to go there, Tim. And it's going to be big to have Malachi back in a big way coming off the edge. And one guy who did not play a lot last year uh, had some injury issues, but he's back for one more rodeo. On the opposite end, you got Malachi coming from one end, and then you got A.J. Agbalese coming off the other edge. That makes for some quarterback sandwiches, I'm hoping, throughout the course of the season. Absolutely. A.J. was missed a lot last year in that defense, coming on the other edge of uh, opposite side of Malachi. And, you know, A.J. really provides that consistent pass rush as well from the opposite side, putting pressure on the quarterback. And when you have two good pass rushers like Malachi Washington and A.J., it's going to give you a chance to win. You know, last year they were uh, forced in a lot of situations, third long, and they could not get off the field. Well, you got two fresh guys, you know, enter their, their – uh, latter years of leadership and we're excited to see what happens indeed morgan state on the flip side offensive side of the football we got some guys uh that are young bucks at running back uh, no real experience toting the rock lots of talent though but nobody who's really done heavy duty damage in a college football environment josh chase got a few touches last year but the other running backs are all newbies to the college football scene and so while we have some talent at running back, uh, experience isn't there. And so that experience is probably something we're going to have to glean as the season progresses. Absolutely. You talked about that experience with Josh Chase. Last year he you know, played in a couple of games, didn't get as much reps with the guys in front of him. But they've graduated. You know, I saw Josh Chase a lot through the practice throughout the uh, offseason. He looks fresh. He looks confident. And the offensive line looks like him are running on one accord. So 
you know, look for Josh Chase to have a good uh, season. Then he has some depth behind him, some younger guys, but they don't have as much experience. And when you have a young running back, the question is, can you hold it to the ball? So that's questions that Coach Jones and, the, and his entire offensive staff, I'm sure, have been uh, trying to answer. And we'll see. But I believe Josh Chase will get the nod today. And, of course, and of course you need somebody to put a little fear in the defense, somebody to take the top off that defense. You need a burner uh, to really be a wide-open offense. And Morgan is blessed to have – uh, an individual who has the capability on any given play to go for the home run. Talking about the wide receiver. He wears number 13 for some reason, the unlucky number, but he's been lucky for Morgan. Uh, I'm speaking, of course, of Manasseh Bailey, who uh, led the team in touchdown receptions, led the team in total receiving yards. And I think he's he's looking even up those numbers this season. Yeah, Manasseh Bailey last year was, quite frankly, a ledger. And, you know, Manasseh and you know, Eli, DeAndre, they'll tell you that there was a lot of touchdowns that Manasseh could have had, quite frankly, if the ball was thrown a little bit better or if the offensive line did their job. However, it's a new season, and Manasseh is, you know, the, the guy that will take the top off the defense. But one thing is I think he's an underrated route runner. He's a very reliable when the quarterback throws the ball to him on third and short. He'll fight for your uh, extra yards, and he's a, you know, like I said, a great route runner. And he'll take the top off uh, the talk to, take the top off the, the defense, and we'll see what happens. But – one thing that he has is an accurate quarterback. You know, last year at times, I believe the quarterback position wasn't as, you know, consistent, you know, when you want a passing uh, offense. You know, and you have that now in DeAndre Harris. And one thing that I'll say is observing in the practices, LG, is the wide receivers, the running backs, the tight ends, the offensive line, and, of course, the quarterback, they're on one accord. And that's one good good thing to have when your head coach, Ernest Jones, in your first season. His name is Roddy. My name is Lamont Germany. We are the Morgan Game Day Experience. We are less than an hour away from getting this party started. Morgan State against Towson U, opening salvo of the season for both the Bears and the Tigers. Let's take a quick peek before we break, Rodney, at the humble opposition, the Towson Tigers, who will be a familiar last name at quarterback uh, for TU. The baby brother of Joe Flacco, Tom Flacco, will be starting a quarterback for the Towson Tigers. Transfer from Rutgers was on the Rutgers team that we played last year when the Bears went up to uh, New Jersey to play Rutgers. Transferred over here to Towson. He is expected to get the starting nod tonight. He's supposed to be a dual threat, run throw, uh, getting his first taste of uh, play as the Towson Tiger. Eyes, I think, are going to be on what can Flacco deliver. Get ready to break, LG. Absolutely. I, I, I believe Flacco is the guy for Towson. You know, he had a good uh, piece of talent that P.J. Fleck at Western Michigan wanted out of high school. You know, first stop at uh, Rutgers and down here at Towson. You know, the kid has to be good because he came in and took a, the job from Ryan Stover, somebody who had the job last year. So you bring in Flacco and, you know, he earned the position. And like you said, he's still third option. He'll hurt you in the passing game and can, you know, extend the play with his feet. We'll, we'll see. see. Tom Flacco expected to get the starting nod from the Towson Tigers. Again, the baby brother of Joe Flacco. Morgan's going to be playing a lot of quarterbacks with some NFL relatives in the uh, pipeline. They, of course, will play Kayla Newton, the, the brother of Cam Newton. And then when they go up to play Albany, Vinny Testaverde Jr., the son of Vinny Testaverde, will be the quarterback at Albany. So we're playing all. Johnny Unitas' son will probably be playing against Morgan before it's all over with. But right now we're going to take a timeout. Quick break as the Morgan game day experience continues. On the other side, going to hear from the head coach. Ernest Jones going to size up the encounter tonight. Morgan against Towson. I'm Lamont Germany. He's Rodney Mitchell. You're listening to the Morgan game day experience. Bring great music, dance team, and shake off the work. We include house, 
hip hop lounge. Drum and bass and so much more. So make sure you tune in to the audio every Saturday night and Sunday morning from midnight to 5 a.m. here on WEAA. Not long enough, but. The voice of the Okay. Well, All right, guys, get ready to come back. We're doing right. the pandemonium right now. All right, man. Hey, Dre, as soon as we come back, I'm going to throw it right to the coach's corner. All right. All right. All right, come back to you guys in three, two. Right back at you, LG. That's me. That's Rodney Mitchell. We do it at U Stadium, Earl C. Banksfield. We are on the Morgan State University campus. This is the Morgan Game Day experience. Had a chance, Rodney, to catch up with Ernest Jones, the head coach. You know he is energy personified. Uh, you got to unplug him at night, man, because he will get you excited, wanting to put on the pads. Uh, coach Jones, an energetic, effervescent presence. And I think Rodney had really helped in the transition that he had already been on the staff. And so it made it easier for players to transition to the new head coach. Absolutely. Uh, the biggest thing is that you have your transition into a head coach position is, you know, gaining trust of your players. And that's what he, you know, was already tasked, but he had the upper advantage, you know, as a defensive coordinator last year, you know, stepping into that transition to the head coach position. He's done a great job, quite frankly. The team uh, believes in him, and they're going to play for him every game. And, that's one thing you earn from your players is respect, and he's done a great job with that. Caught up with the coach a little bit earlier this evening. Let's hear from Coach Jones as he sizes up the encounter tonight between Morgan State and Towson University. Are oh, you guys are clear? It's like 11 minutes on this. I'll serve it up, Morgan State staff. Open cell goal of the season. Top of the hour kickoff between the Morgan State University Bears and the Towson University Tigers. I'm Lamont, Germany. This is the Ernest Jones Report. It's our weekly look at Morgan State University football. We do it through the eyes of first year head coach Ernest Jones. Morgan State getting ready to get it on against TU and Coach Jones. I don't know about you, but this is my favorite time of year. It's time to get it on. It's judgment day. It's a new day. Electric on atmosphere is electric on fans. Our supporters have all come out to support this football team. And we get ready to introduce a new day and we get ready to go out there and battle in this house. Talk to me about what you're going to do. It's fall camp. It's so successful. You're achieving some of the goals you're going to accomplish before the first place. Absolutely. The first thing we wanted to do was create an identity. We thought that that's what was missing in the past. We wanted to make sure they knew who they were, offense, defense, special teams. So we spent a lot of time telling them who they were, getting them to believe that this is the type of defensive team they want to be. This is the type of offensive team they want to be. This is the type of special team they want to be. Then the second part was the work with getting them to love each other, getting them to care about each other, not just be offense versus defense. All of us out there, the old line, the big out, the blue line, the quarterbacks, the DB, linebackers, the running backs. That was the great experience. I was joined in about that. I had an opportunity to keep up a couple of practices. I've seen a team that I thought their practice was intense. Uh, they seem to have a focus. Uh, they seem to enjoy each other. They seem to be having fun. They seem to be a camaraderie uh, throughout practice that was at a level that I had observed in the class. Your thoughts about how this team came together throughout the game? Absolutely. I mean, what we talked about from the very beginning was be physical, be aggressive, and be violent. We understand we need to have fun as we play this great game, but there's a certain way to play the game. And that's what we were here to do. That type of toughness and us. To understand that when we get into those battles, that we're going to fight for more good, and it's going to feel the same way to the other team that we get tired of before. And then we can get them to care about each other, to have fun playing this great game. We've made the offense and the defense something simple because we're saying, this is who we are, this is what we're going to do. Play after play after play. They're going to have to stop us from getting to them on defense. They're going to have to stop us on offense. But this is who we are. That's what's making practices look so fun, so fluid. We, we talk about discipline. Our, our coaches have to be disciplined. Our players have to be disciplined in their execution and all this. 
big night tonight, Coach. Uh, kicking it off against the Towson Tigers. How special is it to get the Tigers right here at home at Houston? You look at it. You look at this atmosphere. You look at this environment. You feel the energy right now that's here on display. I mean, they're the team that's 15 minutes away. They have it all. They have all the bills. They have all the whistles. They're a few years away removed from a national championship. And here we are at Morgan State at Hughes Stadium. I mean, it's going to be an electric night. We're excited to have it present this to our fans. We consider this Baltimore City's football. We're giving this game back to the city. We call it the Battle of Red Baltimore. That's what I Tigers, of course, last year. Didn't have a happy ending. The Bears were 10 nothing losers. Great job defensively by Morgan State that game against Towson a year ago. Uh, do you draw anything from that this year? How do you assess the 2018 version of Towson Tiger football? I mean, we actually, you know, like I said, it's a new day. We have a lot of respect for who they are. I mean, they're a great program. Coach Ambrose is doing a great job over there. You know, this is who we are. This is 2018. This is our time. Morgan State University and East Football Bears. We feel like they're going to be competitive. They're going to be well coached. But they still have to come in here and give us everything they got. We're going to fight for real good. We know what type of team we're going to face. Well, coach, but this group team, a team that has all of the things that they need to prepare them for this football team, we're going to go out there and show them and match up and play with them. Break them down for me, Coach. Who are some of the particular individuals, particular matchups that should be keeping your eye on tonight? You know, for Towson, I mean, their quarterback, I mean, we're going to play it on being black hole. You know, we've seen a little bit of him on field. He can run for a long, he's a runner. He can make all the throws, but he can teach you with his feet. So we're going to have some eyes on him. Oh, check, 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 check. Sips, what they have over there is a good physical runner. He's a one-cut type of guy. He can get through the hole. He can make the play, get the score time. We don't get our hands like that. We like those wide receivers, Sam Gallahan, Jabari Greenwood, and uh, Shane Levin. All three of those guys are explosive. They're dynamic. They can score a touchdown at any given point. So we're going to have to check, check, back check, in. Check, back check, seven, check, like check, check. Mike, check. One, two. We feel good about the front. Matt Coffey over there at the talent position. And then Nick uh, Rosello, one of their inside offensive linemen. He, he's a guy that moves a lot. He's, he's really good. Really athletic. We'll go over there and look at this. Matt. Matt is a guy that we're going to have to deal with. There's a lot of respect for what they're going to offer. And then on defense. I mean, check, 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 check. Mike, check. Sounds good. Thank you. Kind of reminds me of Malachi Washington. So we're going to have to deal with him. So excited about our quarterback. We had a quarterback battle going on with DJ Golak and DeAndre Harris. Uh, DeAndre Harris won it. I mean, so he's going to be a basketball player on grass. He can run football. He can make the throw. He's been a great leader for us this, this offseason. So we're excited. I mean, he's, been, he's been here a couple of years, and they've always bought another quarterback in here to beat him out, if you will. He is the quarterback. He is captain of our football team, as a matter of fact. So we're excited to see him go out there and get after him. Josh Miles over there at the left tackle. We got, we got one of the best left tackles in the country. How good is uh, Josh Miles? Is. Really, really good. Two all-conference players at the safety, Carl Bond and Eric Johnson. 
I think we got you know, our back end is as good as it can get. Malachi Washington coming off the end. AJ Agri's coming off the end. And then in the big middle, you got Anthony Spray holding down in the middle. We feel really, really good about our front. We're going to go to our Coach, how big would it be to set the tone tonight for the win to open up? It'll give, it'll give some credibility to things that we've been talking about to our team. We tell them that they can do it. They can do anything that they want to do. To give something back to the city of our team. To give something to our alumni, to our community, to our administration. Right here, we know it won't be easy. We know they're not going to come in here and lay down. But we know that we put our best foot forward. We execute the game plan that's put in front of us. We respect the identity that we built in all three phases. We don't have to change the identity. Lastly, Coach, this is not your first rodeo. You've been through lots of things and associated with the team. Hey, uh, Coach, in the past, as well as uh, as a coordinator and assistant coach, what's your gut to tell you about the team? I realize you haven't seen them in competitive play yet, but what is your sense of the squad that you have? I sense that they care about each other. I, I, I sense that the brotherhood is important. Hungry to show people what the new day is. It's a new day. We're not concerned about what happened before today. Yesterday, we're talking about the Ryan Fields right now. I just got to go out here and go out there and show you what this is. That's the coach. That's Ernest Young, head man in charge. Morgan State University football. That new day begins tonight as the Bears are about to get it on. It's a thousand dollars in tax. Coach, we appreciate your time. Love this evening. It's team. It's Morgan State. It's Towson University. Kickoff comes your way at the top of the hour. You're listening to the Morgan State University Game Day Experience. Hey, hey, Ramos. You're my shot. I'm out of a shot. I'm the star here. For another exciting edition of Real Questions on WSA 15.9 FM, the voice of the Hi, it's Maria. Maria Hinojosa from the You have You have so much information at your fingertips. Do you sometimes feel overwhelmed by it all? Here at Latino USA, we know that your time is valuable, which is why our team people. prides itself on producing so original the stories Saints. that you won't hear anywhere else. Check us out and share us with your friends and family. Thanks for listening. Sunday night at 7 p.m. on WEAA 88.9 FM. Not sure if you are a current WEAA member, call us at 403 Oh, we guess a lot of Near side line, making the catch. Let's Referee, mic check. One, two, three. All right, LG, are you um, coming to you guys soon? You ready? I am ready. All right. Mic check. Three, one, three, two, two, one. Right back in, LG, that's me. I got Rodney Mitchell. We got a little Morgan football flavor for you. Saturday night style. Bears doing it here at U Stadium, Earl C. Banks Field. We're about 30 minutes plus away from kickoff. Top of the hour deal between Morgan State University and Towson U. And just like the coach indicated in the pregame show, oh, Rodney would be so sweet to set the tone by winning this first game. I unfortunately think last year, 
the loss set the tone in a negative way for what we saw for the balance of the year. So, yes, it is only the first game, but I really do it's an, think it's an important game when it comes to setting the tone for what kind of team you're going to be in the season. Absolutely. You want, you, you want to get out on the right start. And most importantly, you want to make sure your fan base knows that, you know, this new coach, this new regime is working. Nobody wants to see a season that happened last year, 1-10. And quite frankly, nobody wants to see a team that doesn't play football, good football in all three phases, offensively, defensively, and the special teams. And, you know, that first game gives you a, a good impression. You know, they say first impression is everything. Well, tonight the Morgan State Bears have a good test against the Thousand Tigers here at home. You know, last year the 10 nothing losses was tough, but it also was on the road. So, you know, you have a different atmosphere. You have a different location. Let's see if it helps us. Well, Bears, as you mentioned, didn't score. Last year, and what it means, Rodney Morgan has not scored against Towson since 2011. So it's been eight years since we've scored any points against Towson. So I think it's a, about time for that new day to result in some points for Morgan State. I think we have an offense with the profile and the hunger to get some points. Our problem offensively, we couldn't finish. We could move the ball up and down the field. But when we got to the red zone, Rodney Mitchell, we had problems. Right. And that's one thing, you know, that Coach Jones emphasized through these entire practices all season, finishing. Whether that's, you know, running to the football on the defensive side or finishing with the offensive line and the running back, make sure they're getting in the end zone. And those things are, you know, worked on extensively throughout the offseason. One thing that the Morris State Bears did last year, unfortunately, was hurt themselves by step killing themselves in the foot. You know, too many penalties, whether that's on the one the, with the ball on the one yard line or whether that's with the ball on the twelve yard line. When you're in the red zone, you have to you know take that opportunity and privilege it because you're not you might not know when your opportunity will come again. So with that being said, they're emphasized it, they worked on it, and they're ready to finally see if they can score versus these Tulsa Tigers. And the other problem was our special teams, they weren't too special uh last year. We just were inept at kicking field goals and even extra points. And that's a problem because uh, you're just leaving points that you should have on your side of the scoreboard off the board. Uh, we went out. We got a, a legit place kicker, a Nick O'Shea. Alex Ray is back from last year. I think Alex is getting some push from Nick. I think we should see bigger and better things from that aspect of Morgan football. Absolutely. What did Coach Jones say to you uh, when we were at the show last uh, so Thursday? He invested, the team invested a lot in the football program in special teams, right? They sent these uh, athletes out to specialist camps, and, you know, it's been, it's been working. You said that competition between Rhea and uh, the freshman coming over. Well, Coach Jones believes that the kicking game will be a lot better because one thing you don't want to do is, you know, you drive down the field and, you know, have to kick a field goal and walk away off the field with nothing on the scoreboard, you know. So, quite frankly, finishing on special teams is very, very vital for the Morgan State Bears as success this season. Morgan and Towson coming at you at the top of the hour. Before we get to the Bears and the Tigers, Rodney, let's take a look at some of the other folks in the BIAC, what they're up to uh, on this night, opening night in college football. Let's start, Rodney, with the champions, the North Carolina A&T Aggies. Unbeaten, untied, unbought, unbowed. Uh, they won everything. They beat everybody uh, last year. Uh, they were 13 to 0. They won the championship the way you're supposed to win the championship. Every Saturday afternoon, they stepped on the field and they took out a can, got the can opener, and did it Saturday after Saturday after Saturday. So there's no doubt. Really undisputed, undefeated champs. And they got out to a start last week in week zero of the college football season, beat Jacksonville State to let everybody know. Last year was last year, but we're back to do it again this year. That's going to be Morgan's first conference game against the defending champs, the North Carolina Antiagis, looking at the scoreboard, and it's raining in North Carolina, thunderstorms, so their game against East Carolina and the delay. But the Aggies appear to be for real again this year. Absolutely. One thing about a lot of people to understand is, it doesn't matter. HBCU football has athletes, and North Carolina A&T is a prime example. What they do last week, they went to Jacksonville State, and quite, frame, quite frankly, dominated Jacksonville State in all three aspects of the game, special teams, offense, and defense. When you have a quarterback that has the superior talent uh, with the arm strength and running the football and Lamar Reynard, then you have a running back, um, Cartwright, that was phenomenal. Then you have a, a, a dynamic wide receiver um, in Wilson. You have all the pieces 
you know, to success. And then on the defensive defensive side of the football, man, Mac McCain was just phenomenal on uh, Thursday. And they have a test today versus East Carolina, you said, with the rain delay. And I would not be surprised if they handle their business again because one thing about a t is they're showing you a B football to play. You know, it doesn't matter if you play against Towson. No matter if you play against, you know, East Carolina or Jackson State, we're going to go out there and compete. And that's what a t is doing. They're the standard of the conference. Another team that was a big surprise in the big last season right down the road, the Howard University Bison. They have been at or near the basement of the BAC for the past six, seven, eight seasons. First year head coach Mike London came to Howard University and made an immediate difference. Uh, they had a 7-4 regular season. They shocked the world by opening up with a win over UNLV last year and almost had another opening Saturday win this season. They lost to Ohio of the back conference by a 38-32 score. They lost to the Ohio Bobcats. But it looks like Howard University is poised to have another strong season in 2018. Absolutely. You talked about Mike London. What a job he did last year. Coming up from the University of Maryland and putting his blueprint in that higher bison football program. And they just played phenomenal uh, last season. You know, offensively, when you're led by Kayla Newton, yes, the brother came Newton, but he made his own impact. As a freshman, he was dynamic, running the football, throwing the football. They played good defense. And you said they were a nail biter team versus Ohio. But, you know, in three weeks, we'll go down to Akron. Similar team than, as the Akron. Uh, same conference. Zip, same conference as Ohio Wildcats. That's an opportunity for Morgan State to show, hey, the MEAC, we're here to play. And that's what you're doing. We have teams in the MEAC going to these schools, not just buying games, but they're competing. And quite frankly, they're playing better. Howard was one a couple points away from being victorious, just like last year. But you know. Yeah, lost by six elsewhere in the MEAC on this opening Saturday. Florida a at home against Fort Valley State. Uh, that game uh, also delayed with some thunder showers down in Tallahassee. A 13 to nothing uh, Florida a lead that game in the second quarter. Virginia Union or Virginia State against North, Norfolk State tied at seven and seven during the first quarter. Buffalo taking on Delaware State. A seven nothing lead for Buffalo in the first quarter. And Georgia State, South Carolina State. Georgia State and Atlanta has a 6 nothing lead over South Carolina State. A bit later tonight, Bethune Cookham will take on Tennessee State. And as we mentioned, games that are final from uh, earlier in the week. Uh, it was North Carolina A&T beating Jacksonville State last week. And Savannah State took a thumping 52 to nothing to UAB. Here, it's going to be Morgan. It's going to be Towson. It's going to be at the top of the hour. But before we get to the game on the field, we're going to talk to one of the Morgan State athletes. Talk about what this athlete is about both on and off the field. It's one of those Morgan linebackers. He's a key cog in the line backing through for Morgan State University. Had a chance, Rodney, to sit down and learn a little bit more about number five, Ian McBurl. He's up next. He is our athlete player profile. Ian McBurl, you know, he's a great example of playing football and handling his business off the, off the field. Doing a great job academically. He's a leader for that Morgan State defense. I'm excited to see him with the healthy Damari Whitaker at linebacker. And, you know, Morgan State has to be excited about the leadership on this football team, but most importantly, Ian McBurl. All airs on Ian McBurl. He's coming up straight ahead. Again, our interview with the Morgan junior linebacker, Ian McBurl. About business. All right, you guys are clear. Thank you, sir. About business. Very serious about being an athlete. Ian McBarrow, the outside linebacker, makes a stop in the drop for the Bears. Without question, he's a single ball. But the business nature of the Bears is a and while I was there, I never played different professional football. 
like all different ways throughout the uh, business world. I kind of like uh, and and safety, uh, job six one, two hundred seven, knockout senior from Baltimore, Maryland, number twenty five, Darius Johnson. I'm one of the banks of my area, so I'm gonna look into there first, and then if that doesn't work, I'll just keep shooting because it's anything that beats my interest. And that quarterback, six one, two hundred ninety five pounds senior from Southern Virginia. How difficult is it to keep things in balance and to maximize the University of Coach Ernest Jones. I need to see the coach. I'm sorry to see the coach. Uh, I would definitely say my personality changes as I go from like a student to an athlete. Like when I'm a student, I'm just quiet and quiet, just, you know, looking at the teacher, taking notes, and I'm like, let me. But like, as soon as I get on the field, like, I just want to kill it. <laughs> Anything is in front of me, it's just my whole demeanor changes. I'm like, wow, I'm everywhere, I'm flying around, I'm athletic. Like, it's just, it's just, I feel like the teacher. This year, your role has definitely changed. The leadership component, which you're asked to do by coaches, has definitely changed. Uh, talk to me about what that change has meant to you. Have you gravitated and grasped that opportunity? Have there been some growing pains as you have a lot more responsibility now than you had in the first game? Uh, yeah, it's, it's different because like, you know, you're expected to be a freshman because as a freshman coming in you want more playing time you want all this and like all the attention but now that you have it there's more responsibility on you to like make plays and not just be making plays just to make sure the people around you are making plays by making sure everybody's on the same page and it goes way past the field like you have to hold your teammates accountable for like being in meetings going to classes you know that work and like being in leadership and being in leadership position on the football team goes way like past the field it's just all around, no matter what it is, you have to make sure your guys are doing what they're supposed to be doing and make sure like you respect them just so they can respect you because if you are a leader here, uh, the people who need to respect you that causes for uh, are successful. Like, you can be successful because you're achieving your goal. It's not your favorite play. Interception. Does that get you a sack? Does that get you a good clean hit to uh, take down the running back? Does that get you a what pumps you to grow on the like you said, I would say with an interception, an interception or a tap of the because third down, I know what you to do because, like, no matter what happens on first and second down, third down, we did take the turn to set up like what they did to do for the job to do. So, a TFO or an interception on third down, that would be like the biggest attack in front of this And lastly, athletically and academically. Uh, not necessarily for this season, but what do you want to accomplish athletically before you graduate from Morgan? Of course, academically. Before you graduate. Uh, academically, I want to have like a five. And athletically, I want to, I want to win a pair of the year award. I want to win the championship. Maybe like once, even twice. And I just want to run for two years left. Maybe we're going to win the year championship. The next year. Hey, Rodney. Uh, when we come back, man, five minutes, just kind of set the table, our thoughts about how this was going to unwind. Morgan State University. And we will close. Get the spotlight. All right, and I'm uh, playing. I'm just gonna go on the field, get some notes, yeah. and then come at halftime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kick off yeah. at the top of the hour. You know what I hear? Your Morgan game day experience. Don't have one. Yeah.
Hey folks, this is Dr. K from Today with Dr. K. Now I may be the host of the show, but as I always show the show belongs to the university. Then we'll get to McLean. McLean, Drake, Here we go. The 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 yeah. We're about to come back, OG. All righty, stand by. All right, OG. Three, two. Back in, back at you. LG, that's me. Got Rodney Mitchell by my side. We're minutes away from kick time. Brooks State tells you first game of the season to both the Bears and the Tigers, and they call Saturday's Rodney Judgment Day. First Judgment Day on tap today. All the talk, all the optimism, all the energy going to be put into the test for both teams tonight. Going to find out what you have and show me your cards now. All the talk about the good feeling, and both teams talk positive about how things went over the summer. All that's fine and dandy, but ultimately the true test is what happens when you pound and pop pads on Saturday. Absolutely. Both teams, unfortunately, were picked to finish high in their respective uh, you know, media polls. But uh, like Coach uh, Jones, then you have Coach Ambrose on both sides. They're highly optimistic. They think their teams are better than what predicted. And like you said, practices, you know, the uh, projections, they don't mean anything until that ball's kicked off. So at 7 o'clock, we're going to have two football teams. Uh, you know, one from the SES and one from the you know Division One AA PA, ready to roll here at U Stadium. So and from the Morgan perspective, Rodney, I think there are some things that we need to look for early in the game. And let me list them and see if you agree. I think one thing we have to see is how does our quarterback DeAndre Harris react to being the man? He hadn't been the man in his previous two seasons at Morgan. Both seasons, Morgan brought in a transfer quarterback who started in front of DeAndre Harris. And so he didn't get run as the starting QB until later in both of those seasons. Two years ago, it was Chris Andrews. A season ago, it was Eli Staley. There is no transfer coming in this year. This year, it is DeAndre Harris's offense. We know he has the physical talents. Is how he comports to this new role that I think will go a long way in determining what kind of offense for them? Absolutely. You know, DeAndre Harris is that guy. You know, you talked about the two transfers brought in to compete against him. That didn't happen this year. He went on and beat, uh, you know, EJ for the position. And Coach uh, Jones and offense has his full trust. The keys are given to DeAndre. We'll see the type of rhythm if he can get out, you know, move the ball consistently. You don't want what you want to see from the quarterback is make sure there's error three, error of free. Do not turn the ball over. Make your right reach. Throw the ball. Have your receivers confident in you. And also, absolutely have the offense line help and the last part of that puzzle, Rodney, we've got to finish. Morgan actually was the number three in the MEAC last year, total offense, just moving the ball. We moved the ball, but as we mentioned earlier, when we got in that red zone, there were problems. And then unfortunately, because of those problems, we weren't able to score. The Bears are going to have to finish when they move the ball, something they couldn't do last season. Absolutely. When you go, the goal is to finish. You know, you want one thing you want to do is, you know, first of all, make sure you're trusting your speed, trust the play, and absolutely, you cannot hurt yourself, right? Uh, preset penalties, false starts, you know, jumping offside, you know, infractions, that cannot happen today. And quite frankly, the rest of the season, if the offense wants to finish, talk about top three. Well, that's pretty, pretty good for the offense in 1-10. And, and we saw them last year. Man, they were so close. So you talk about top three. Let's see if they get in top two because that, that would mean that we're – Planning our business for making sure the offensive line is not having those pre snap infractions and we're finishing getting in the, red, in the end zone. And that's the overall the goal of winger in that side of the field. And on the defensive side of the football, Rodney, we had a penchant for giving up the big play. Uh, we gave up our fair share of monster plays. And it makes it so easy for the opposition. They don't have to earn their way down the field with long, time consuming oftentimes punishing drives. A lot of times it's one big play and they score. And we gave up a ton of big plays. We have got to reduce our our predilection for giving up the big bombs. 
Absolutely. And, you know, one of the biggest things I think that had the Morgan State defense last year was gap integrity. And I had the privilege to talk to the new uh, defensive line coach, and he came in. He's coming over from uh, Shepard and Akron, and he told me, quite frankly, he said, this defense, they're understanding the importance of gap integrity. When you have gap integrity, that allows your linebackers and your the secondary to come up and fill, you know, and the D-line is clocking those gaps. So the, all the linebackers and the corners have to do is tackle. Last year, they didn't have the opportunity because the gaps were just so wide open. You know, a five-yard run that should be five yards turned into 40 and 50. And that cannot happen for the defense. You know, they had a lot of sacks last year. But like you said, on Thursday, it, it's a behoove you. It, it makes no sense if you're going to get a sack and then you get a penalty and you're giving up a play. That that sack was, you know, quite frankly, they didn't mean anything. So the defense is trying to finish as well. And looking at the opposition, Towson, I think some keys for them. They're looking at the real – Shane Mosley to show up because that didn't happen when these two teams met last year. He was virtually not even a factor in the game, although he did score the only touchdown. That touchdown was set up by an interception by Monty Fenner at the two-yard line. He ran it in two yards for the score. But for the rest of the game, really did not have a productive afternoon. This is a potentially explosive home run hitter anytime he touches the football. And I think from a Towson perspective, they're expecting bigger and better things than Shane Mosley. Absolutely. Coach Ambrose has been in the house with Shane Simpson, you know, Shane Mosley. They, they need him. They need him to produce. You know, he's an all FCS, uh, you know, running back. And quite frankly, he deserves it. He was banked up last year. So he's 100% uh, what Co- Coach Ambrose and Towson are saying. And we'll see. The big thing with him is, is trusting that. You know, I read a report. He has a great relationship with Saquon Barkley. They kind of both the same. So let's see if the motivation from Saquon and what Coach Ambrose has said about him is good back on him. So we'll see what happens. Shane Simpson is the guy that Morgan State Bears will be looking for, looking to contain today. Indeed. Shane Mosley and, of course, uh, the quarterback. We know he has the last name. Does he have the game? Uh, we're going to find out if Tom Flacco uh, can get it done as he is expected to get the starting nod. For the Towson University time. Absolutely. Flacco, uh, you know, he's home. This is the area that, you know, he's from. I think Joe Flacco might be coming today, so that's even better for him. But, you know, quite frankly, you know, Flacco has a job to do. Coach Ambrose is, you know, banking on him. You know, you had a starting quarterback last year in Stover. Flacco came in and beat. So, you know, the offense has to be confident. And let's see if he can do a good job of making the right reads, not turning the ball over, and moving the ball down the football. Moving the field down the, moving the football down the field. One more question for you, Rodney Mitchell. You ready for some football? I oh, mean, it's been a long time. You know, when football came back Thursday, everybody was excited. We're here, you know, a couple minutes away from kickoff. Indeed, won't be long now. Kickoff, top of the hour. Morgan Towson, you. We're going to step aside, get set to bring you the flavor of Morgan State Towson. The battle of greater Baltimore is about to be all the way on. We'll have the call of every single down throughout the course of the evening right here on Morgan State University Radio. I want to thank back in the studio at the mothership as Andre Mountain. He is our board operator and producer for the game day experience. I want to thank our executive producer, Mallory Pinker Pierre. On-site producer, Mikhail Ramos. Also want to thank my co-host. That'll be Rodney Mitchell. We're going to see what the Bears are going to do, man. Moments away from getting this one on. We'll be back in a matter of moments. For Rodney Mitchell, I'm Lamont Germany. You've been listening to the Morgan Game Day Experience. September 15th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Baltimore Metropolitan, 11 p.m.